Good morning. Hello. Um, can you all hear me okay? Great. Well, I'm delighted to be here today to talk to, talk to you all about the Refine project and uh, very happy to see so many people um, uh, interested in the topic. What I'm going to try and do today is, uh, is cover the project in general, what are its objectives, what is it trying to do, talk specifically about the electrolyzer system and how we're going about the design, and then uh, show in a bit more detail uh, the different modules of the electrolyzer so you can get a feel for physically what the equipment is. And I'll finish with a quick summary. So the, in the beginning, uh, this project came around due to three principal things happening at the same time. Shell were in the process of reflecting on their uh, ongoing energy transition in Germany and gathering ideas across the business to understand how they can uh, decarbonize. Uh, and an electrolyzer was in the thinking of, uh, of Shell as a potential solution to some of the challenges that uh, the, the organization and the sector were facing. The second thing was that Shell and ITM had a pretty good relationship already. We've worked together in the UK. We have deployed a number of hydrogen refueling stations on Shell forecourts, and uh, we had a, a good relationship there. And the third thing was that um, a, uh, the FCHJU um, made available a call to support a project of this type. So all of these three things happened at the same moment which enabled the project to uh, uh, begin to form. So what is the, the project? Well, it's to deploy a 10 megawatt PEM electrolyzer in a refinery. There are announcements all of the time about bigger and bigger electrolyzers. But at the time, this was, and I believe will be, the largest electrolyzer of its type when it is, uh, when it is deployed. It's going to enable on-site hydrogen and oxygen generation on the refinery, which is going to feed into an existing hydrogen pipeline. It's going to be based at the uh, Vesseling site at the Rhineland refinery complex. That's the largest refinery in Germany. Uses a staggering 180,000 tons of hydrogen a year. And so while this electrolyzer is going to be a, the biggest in the world, it's going to generate only 1% of the hydrogen demand for that particular refinery. So it gives a sense of where all of this is uh, moving to. Um, as I mentioned, ITM and Shell jointly made a successful bid to the FCHJU, um, which uh, enabled the, the project to be part funded. So we're very thankful to the FCHJU for that. And we have a number of other partners in the project, including uh, Shell Deutschland Oil, Shell New Energies, Sintef, Thinkstep, um, and Element Energy. Shell's responsibility is to provide the site provide all of the grid connections, and deal with the local permitting process. ITM's role is to design, deploy, and operate the electrolyzer, and the partners are focused on modeling the various um, utilization scenarios and looking for uh, the impacts thereafter. The, the project is five years in duration. First two years is the design uh, and deployment of the electrolyzer, and then we have three years of trial oper operation before it moves into ongoing um, uh, shell operations thereafter. <clears throat> okay. So as I mentioned, four tons of hydrogen a day is what is gonna come out of this particular electrolyzer. And while it is a relatively small portion of the, um, of the uh, hydrogen that the, uh, ref the refinery is gonna be using, it does represent about 10% of the electricity consumed. So being able to respond very rapidly, the electrolyzer is able to help the refinery to load balance across its site. <laughs> Wasn't me. And um, what that means is that um, they can even out the spiky power consumption across the whole refinery to have a more sophisticated way of, of purchasing power. It will also enable them to provide external grid balancing services. So that's a, a, an additional revenue stream that the refinery can capture as a, I'm just going to put this down <laughs> as, a, as a result of having a rapid response system. So to look in a bit more detail about the electrolyzer, in principle it's pretty straightforward, but there are a few things to consider. One of the main challenges uh, ITM faces when uh, defining its product, uh, uh, electrolyzer uh, product por portfolio is that everybody wants a different size of system. And so what we've had to do is focus on how we standardize a, a module that we can repli replicate again and again to enable us to 
expose ourselves to the very wide range of capacities that's out there while being able to standardize. And we've done this through developing a two megawatt module. We've got a, at the heart of this is on our, on our stand. It's packaged in a 10 foot ISO container and we can gang these things together like Lego blocks to achieve higher and higher capacities. So in, the, in this case, we're putting five of them together to achieve a 10 megawatt stack skid. And it also provides a number of operational benefits. Each of those two megawatt modules can be operated independently. So that means that you've got quite a few options for how you fine tune the operation of the system. And it means that you can have a rolling maintenance program. So if you need to perform maintenance on one of the modules, you can continue operating with the other four. So, <laughs> okay. So the, um, uh, the, the, the way this project has, uh, has developed, um, ITM is providing all of the designs for the building and then Shell will be, uh, will be um, uh, uh, constructing this on site. So honestly, this isn't me. <laughs> so what we can see in the middle here is a, uh, the 10 megawatt stack skid, but it's important to recognize that an electrolyzer, is, uh, an electrolyzer system is much, much more than that. You need all of the balance of plant around it to make it function. So in our package, we're including step-down transformers, the AC to DC rectification, the electrolyzer stacks obviously, hydrogen purification, water purification, heat rejection, frost protection, and all of the control systems as well. And when people talk about an electrolyzer, we often use slightly different definitions. And I think it's important to recognize that it is the, uh, the full um, package. So the building itself is, um, is, is gonna be pretty impressive. The project has been really engaged with on the refinery. It's a new and exciting project, a clean project at the refinery, and the people that are working on it are really enthused by that. And it really has uh, got a, a certain air of enthusiasm about it. And it will be something that, uh, that we can all be proud of. So I just uh, thought it was worth putting a, an expanded picture on the screen so that you can see in a little bit more detail all of the, uh, the different elements. I'm not going to talk through it in detail, um, but um, uh, very happy to take questions on any of that later should, uh, should you uh, want some more information. So as a quick, um, a, a quick summary, I think this is a, an important lighthouse project um, for the industry. We've heard all week about the transition of electrolyzers from small to large and the need for many, many megawatts, even gigawatts have been talked about routinely this week. And I think this is one example project where you can really see what an electrolyzer can do in a really exciting um, uh, uh, refinery application. And in executing this project, the uh, ITM has learned a tremendous amount from working with a company like Shell, industry-renowned standards for how to execute projects and, projects and deliver engineering. And there's been fantastic collaboration between the two teams. So this has been a really genuine uh, learning and growing experience for, uh, for, for ITM. If you do want any more information, there should be some flyers on the tables in front of you. There's also a website and a YouTube video which shows you how the, the, the plant is going to operate. And um, we're also on stand B68, should anybody want to come and see us later. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Simon Boren. Are there any questions from the audience regarding the project? No? Uh, a short question regarding heat duty. Um, uh, how much uh, heat removal is uh, needed for waste heat um, if you're using 10 megawatt electric power input? Okay, well, we'd be operating at about, give or take about 70% efficiency at full load. So the 10 megawatt full um, uh, electric input, we, we obviously had to deal, the, the, uh, the excess heat is, uh, is rejected to atmosphere. The electrolyzer operates re at relatively low temperature, it's around 55 degrees. So the, um, the heat is, um, on a refinery, there's so much waste heat that uh, there's not much benefit for it. But in other applications, it is something that we can recover. We have recovered it in the past and used it in, uh, in adjacent processes. So what's the, 
Sure. What's the uh, perspective of uh, electrolyzer technology, especially compared to uh, LNG converting uh, technology? Okay. So I think um, electrolysis is an important um, enabling technology. We face a number of uh, very difficult energy storage challenges right now. And we know a lot about the, uh, the driver to deploy more and more renewable power and the challenges that renewable power is facing uh, gives us in that it's intermittent and not always available when we need it. And electrolysis, I think, is a very effective way of being able to capture that transient green power, convert it into something that is storable, which can be reused later. One of the earliest projects ITM did was um, um, a power to gas energy storage project here in Germany, where the electrolyzer was capturing renewable power, converting it to hydrogen and injecting it directly into the natural gas network. And so it decarbonizes everything downstream. And I think the other point that's relevant is scale. You know, there aren't many technologies out there that can operate on the sort of scale that we need in today's, um, uh, today's environment. It needs to be at utility scale. So I, my, my personal belief is that the challenge for the electrolyzer community is to be able to upscale to hundreds of megawatts and then ultimately gigawatts. Is there questions from this side? Yeah. Uh, could, you, could you indicate from the investment what is uh, the amount percentage allocated to the stack and all the rest around it because you said that's uh, underestimated and also is the stuff around it more for the electronics is that more standard for companies like Shell would they provide the resources or is there a lot of special stuff dedicated to your process okay well I think the, um, the, the balance of plan is, um, is relatively straightforward um, industrial uh, uh, packages. Um, in this project, we are supplying the whole system. So we've got a very well-defined boundary of what's our responsibility and what's Shell's. So we're taking in um, clean water and uh, 6 kV power, and then we do everything um, to the point where we have hydrogen at the output at the right pressure, purity, and flow rate. In terms of the, uh, the, the overall costs of the system, it's um, the, the usual metric for describing electrolyzer cost is, is euros per kilowatt. And it depends quite a lot on that scope of supply. Um, my, um, uh, my rule of thumb is that at small scale, maybe single megawatt uh, level, it's around 1,000 euros per kilowatt. Um, today at uh, 10 megawatts, it's in the region of 700 to 800, depending on scope. And as time moves forward um, and we achieve more scale, and we start to enjoy the, the cost reduction benefits that come with that scale, uh, we see a pathway to around 500 euros per kilowatt by the mid-2020s. The, 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 the stack is a, um, is, a, is a reasonable portion of, of the overall. Um, it would be a little bit less than 50%. Further questions from the audience? Okay, then uh, let me have the next one. What about the deployment? You, you mentioned the time frame, but when can we expect it? Okay, so the, um, we, we're one year into the project at the moment. So the first year has been doing all of the design work, getting all of the documentation ready to enable Shell to um, uh, uh, submit their planning application. And that process is, is quite challenging on a refinery given all of the complexities of the surrounding systems. So we're, we're now in a phase where we are manufacturing and procuring the packages and we'll be starting to deliver those packages to the refinery uh, this year. And the expectation is that we'll have first hydrogen in 2020. Thank you very much. Yeah, another question. Um, what will be the cost of electricity for this? How do you calculate the one megawatt per or, or, or one million euros per megawatt, which is equal to one. So the the, um, the, the euros per kilowatt is a, is a, is a capex number. So that's a, that's a cost for the equipment. And the cost of the hydrogen that comes out of the electrolyzer is a function of both the capex and the electricity price. Um, so uh, clearly um, being able to source lower and lower cost electricity and is, is very important. And um, uh, we are, th there have been some recent changes um, to drive the cost of renewable power down lower and lower. 
And in fact, there are even times where electric renewable power is negatively priced because there's, there's no use for it. So it's very important in order to capitalize on that, that the electrolyzer is able to operate um, intermittently and it can modulate its power consumption very rapidly. And that's one of the fundamental benefits of PEM electrolysis and, and, and really one of the key reasons why Shell have adopted this technology for this project. Okay, thank you again. Uh, looking at the time, we will finish the discussion, discussion at this point. Thank you again, Dr. Samenborn. If you have further questions or you want to discuss any further, please go to booth uh, B68 or he will be around to yeah. talk about the topic. Thank okay. you again. Thank you.